See? Hello, everybody. How are you? I'm Alex Bennett, and this is our little uh, Monday thing we do with people. Well, we don't have a lot of them waiting today, but who knows? Maybe more will join us. Um, it's uh, another one of those days here in New York, and uh, let's admit some of our people here. There's uh, Rick Sheckman is here, and Edward Berger is here, and Jeff Stein is here. And the ever popular Charlie Wallace down in Texas is here. Hello, Charlie. How are you today? Doing good. You're doing good. How are you doing, Shecky? No complaints. No complaints. Jeff? Well, his mic isn't on. <laughs> as usual. Uh, hello to Edward Berger. How that's right. Yeah. It, it, that's, that's right. That's right. Have you always had that voice, or did somebody <laughs> stick a popsicle? Down your throat? I, guess, I guess I've always had it, I think. Years ago, there was an actor, Andy Devine. I'm sure Rick knows who I'm talking about. Right. And Andy Devine had this really hoarse voice. And the mm. way he got it when he was a kid, he fell on a stick. <laughs> and it went down his throat. And he, he sounded like that for the rest of his life. But mm. uh, if Shecky remembers him, he made quite a living out of it, you know. He always worked. He always worked. And uh, he was a sidekick usually, right? That right. was his job. Yeah. Yeah, he did a couple of seasons on the Benny show. It, yeah. Uh, but he also... Um, and played Jingles on one of those early Westerns. Uh, 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 jingles on... What was it? Kick was it on Roy Rogers? No. No. Uh, no. Oh. Uh, sidekicks to Roy Rogers were like Gabby Hayes was a sidekick. Mm. Pat Brady was a sidekick. Oh, yeah, yeah, Brady. right. That's it. That. Yeah. Um, Andy Devine was a sidekick. I'm trying to remember. He did play Jingles, and I'm trying to remember if that was like on Kit Carson, maybe? Or Gene Could be. Gene Autry? Not one Gene Autry. Gene Autry? No, no, he never worked with Gene Autry. No, who, who, who worked with Gene Autry? Smiley. Uh, Smiley uh, Burnett. Smiley Burnett. Real, Didn't uh, Al St. John work with uh, with somebody for a while? Les LaRue, Eddie Dean, people like that. Wow. You don't know who we're talking about, do you, Charlie? No, I love those shows. I saw oh, really? oh, okay. All right. I'm 71. Come on. I'm not, I'm not a youngster. Yeah, but I I um um I used to love those westerns when I was a kid. I was a big western fan. Uh, and especially of all those Westerns I used to see on Saturday afternoons at the, at the movies. Did you ever go to those, Shecky? Were you old enough to still have those Saturday afternoon matinees for kids, kitty matinees? Yes, but they weren't running B Westerns at that point. Oh, really? Oh, okay. They were running Jerry Lewis pictures. Oh, okay. <laughs> How about you, Charles? Did you go to the Saturday yeah. morning matinees? Disco Kid, Lone Range, all, yeah. 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 Uh, I went to those. Yeah. Uh, then uh, let's see here. Uh, I'm trying to think. Um, yeah, I I used to go to them when we would have a uh, there would be a cartoon, there would be a serial, and then there would be a feature. And most of the time, the feature was a western. You left out the news. Yeah, they had the oh, news. No, we didn't have the news reels. Not in the kitty matinees. We didn't have the news. Yes, we did. We did. You did. Yeah, we had news. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Educated people. Here's somebody called Snooky that I haven't seen here before. Hello, Snooky. Do you have a video at all? This may have to be someone we have to get rid of, actually. Uh, let me see here. Snooky. No camera. No camera turned on, Snooky. Um, Bye, Snooky. Huh? <laughs> Bye, yeah. Snooky. Bye, Snooky. I'll give him one more minute, one, about 10 more seconds. Snooky? Must be Snooky Lanson, right? Yeah. Right. Um, there's another name most people don't remember. Uh, has to unmute now. Uh, more? Okay, we're going to remove him. Okay. Goodbye, Snooky. Bye, Snooky. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you later. Don't report. Okay. Anyway, they always ask me if I, if I remove somebody rather than just remove them, Zoom asked me, well, what do you want us to do with this guy? Do you want me to, to get rid of him? Do you want us to execute him? What do you want? Yeah. <laughs> so, and I, too many questions. 
And, and you know what I'm getting sick of? I don't know if you guys are getting sick of it. Two-step verification. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, ugh. Lately, uh, YouTube says now, in order to put out a show every night, I'm going to have to have two-step verification in place. Now, do I have to verify it once, and then every time I sign on again, it's fine? Or do every time I sign on, do I have to wait for them? I think every time you sign on. Oh, God. <laughs> It's for your protection. Well, like I would that like code on the back of your credit card that you give to everybody you've ever met. Well, the, uh, uh, worse than that, when you go to a restaurant, what do they do with your credit card? They take it. They take it in the back room. Yep. <laughs> Who knows what's back there? A, fa uh, uh, a machine? A guy, a guy cloning credit cards. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, but, but I mean, this whole thing about two step verification. Okay, so YouTube should offer it if i want it but if i don't want it they shouldn't say you can't put your program on unless you have two-step verification why why let me be the 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 uh person well maybe there's the some lawyer who has said alex bennett is going to sue us if something goes wrong so uh, we'll have two-step verification to say to him well we had two-step verification yeah yeah it's two-step verification if I want to monetize it. If I don't want to monetize it, I don't have to have two-step verification. I mean, it's ridiculous. You know. Uh, fuck them all. You know? It, it, you know. The only one I don't seem to have much trouble with is Zoom. They never upsell me. They never do anything like that. Zoom is great. I just pay for it every month, and uh, I can talk and use, uh, use it as much as I want to. Hmm. So, you know, uh, but uh, um, gee, Len LaFrisco isn't here, and uh, oh, uh, what's his name? Um, Andrew is not here. Huh? Andrew? Where's yeah. Andrew? Andrew yeah. isn't here. Yeah. Oh, he, right. He and, my, and, and Mike Chisholm. Mike Chisholm. Yeah. When I don't hear from these people, I worry about them. <laughs> you know, I think something horrible might have happened. Jeff, you know that I sent it to Pam. I, I get a message. To... Well, we were worried about we were worried about Jeff because it was but, two days. Alex hadn't heard from him. Yeah, I know. but I'm always see. I get worried about him because he does have certain con a certain condition, which you know one day could lay him low, and I want to make sure he's okay. You know, as with all of us. You're right. That's right. Okay. When it, it, when when Charlie don't I don't hear from Charlie I just know he's out with baseball you know yeah so I don't worry about you uh, I, I would worry a little bit about Steve I guess I'm I'm I worry more about the people with beards yeah. sure, okay <laughs> so, and since Marjorie is my beard uh, no. Uh, <laughs> But anyway, yeah, I used to love those Saturday matinees. I used to look forward to it. And uh, and it was mother's cheapest babysitter. You go at 10 in the morning, you get out at 4.30. Yeah, but now, now what happened when you used to go to the Marjorie? Did you just walk to them on your own? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I used to go to them on my own. I used to walk a mile from the house. This is when but I we were was, like I, a group of kids. I was, would I was all like go nine years old. I it, go walk a mile. It was good and healthy. Walk to the movie theater. See, see the show, which lasted maybe two and a half, three hours. It lasted from 1030 to almost five. Well, that and it was like, no, no. Mother's cheapest babysitter. <clears throat> Mine was just uh, two out. It was like, what, an hour and a half of the Western. How much for the cartoon? Seven minutes for the cartoon. Wait, you forgot the news and you the, forgot. No, there's the, no, the no. You're you're cartoon. thinking about the rest of the shows. This is the kitty matinee. They didn't show the news. What kid wanted to watch the goddamn? News? I heard the news when I was growing up. God, I can hardly wait to go to the kitty matinee and see what's happening in. Uganda. They went fast. It didn't last long. As a kid, yeah. I let's see what's new in Korea today. Yeah, yeah. no, we didn't have it. We didn't have a newsreel. <laughs> But we did have we did have the cereal, so that was another twenty minutes. So it was about a two-hour show, I guess. Overall, the cereal was great because they always left her dangling over a cliff, and then all of a sudden, the next week, 
she wasn't really dangling. She was there. Like, what they did in the serial, the great ripoff in the serials was that they would leave you hanging. Like Batman, all of a sudden, uh, he, uh, he, a car comes along and it looks like it pushed him off a cliff. Next Crazy. week, they show you a scene they didn't show you that week in which he jumps out of the way. <laughs> you know, I mean, that, it was always a rip. You always knew he was going to survive. After all, they're going to kill Batman off in the first episode. Especially since the serial was named after him. By the way, anybody... Uh, what what who do we lose? Oh, Jeff. Jeff, Jeff. Yeah. there he is. Uh, uh, anybody here ever, ever see the Batman serials? Sure, lousy. Yeah, yeah. so lousy. Am I tell you? It, no, you know what the lousiest thing was the thing that just turned me off completely is his costume, <laughs> which like had wrinkles in it. You know, it didn't. It wasn't that today they have like lycra and things like that, spandex. In those days, all they had was, and I guess the actors must have, must have killed them. It looked like they were wearing wool. It was like they were in their pajamas. You know. So. I've been watching uh, all the old Houdini serials and movies. Houdini? Yeah, Houdini did uh, several. Uh, I never 1919, 1920. Yeah. Do you have them, Jackie? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're not oh, great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're, they're not great movies, but he's fantastic to watch. It's, it's you can get it from Amazon. They've, they've been restored. Yeah. I have a DVD set. Yeah. Yeah. The Master Mystery and a couple of others. I think the names of them. I wonder if right I can now. find it online somewhere. Hmm. Yeah, that's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So how, how, so, how many serials did he do? There are several, but they're long. Well, they a lot there are a couple of features. Yeah. I think one serial and the rest were features. Yeah. What was that first serial that was ever done? The French thing? Uh, I'm going to get Fantomas. Yeah. Huh? Fantomas? I'm trying to remember. It had, it had, I think it had a slightly different name. But each episode was like 45 minutes. Yeah. They didn't, in those days, they didn't think of a serial as being like, you know, 20 minutes and then we got one next week. Well, it was like watching Lou Grant or watching some TV show. Yeah. Yeah, but later on they came into the serial format, which was about twenty minutes. The first episode was usually twenty-five, and then the, every other episode was twenty minutes. Well, the first three chapters were the sales chapters. That's how they would sell it to the theater owners. Oh, okay, all right. So those had the most action, and then they just turned into, "We're going to chase somebody this way. Now we'll chase them that way. Now we'll have a fist fight." You know. Yeah. Right. But did you, uh, 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 so those, the, those were sold to the, to the, um, well, I mean, they the were theater. sold to, the, you know, the exhibitors, you know. Yeah, but didn't the exhibitors kind of like, I know my exhibitors seem to always take the Columbia serials. You know, like they took them every week. In fact, didn't certain theaters in those days when it just came to movies have a deal with a particular studio and then another theater had a deal with another studio? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, one studio was Warner Brothers, another studio was Columbia, another studio was, you know. Um, and then the thing with the serial was, let's say it was 13 chapters. Back in that day, they would give you a card, that you, a punch card. And if you saw all the first 12 chapters, the 13th week was free. Oh, I never had that. It's in the 40s. Oh, that 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 was nice. Well, they also had, and and we don't have them anymore, and I think movie theaters, they want to bring people back to movie theaters. Dish have, night? They should have dish night. Yes, dish night. Every night, you got a different dish, right? Yeah. Yeah, and, and if you went, like, for... Uh, oh, I don't know how many weeks you would finally have a four place setting of China. <laughs> the first week they give away one dish, the next week they give away another dish, and then they give away a cup the third week. Right, 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 right. I remember that with, with gas stations. Yeah. When my parents bought gas, they would get either green stamps or. Well, green stamps were a different thing altogether, SH green stamps. But those. Uh, what happened was is they they literally uh, would give you a different dish each time and then did you ever remember 
the soap, what was it, the soap? That each box of soap came with a dish? Do you remember that? No. Yeah. They figured they could put it in boxes of soap because where's it going to wind up anyway? In soap. <laughs> Being clean. So anyway, we've had all those kinds of promotions and we don't have them anymore. You're lucky if they're nice to you when you come to the theater. <laughs> Yeah. I have no desire to go to a theater. What'd you say, Shecky? No, I said they'll be happy to sell you fake popcorn with, you know, the fake butter. Oh, with that pens oil? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, terrible. Uh, I, let's see here. Anybody, nobody is here except for Shecky who would know this. Uh, no. Guess, guess who came over today? Well, Shecky Lori. knows. Lori Thompson, my old newswoman from San Francisco. And uh, she, uh, she, lovely woman, yeah, lovely woman, absolutely lovely, wonderful person. And we're gonna, I'm gonna do a thing with her on Zoom in a couple of weeks when she gets back home again. But she's getting married, and she's 61. Good. And my line to her was, "Aren't you a little young to be getting married?" <laughs> no, to be getting engaged. You said, <laughs> or to be getting engaged, yeah. Well, she had to go through her phase, so to speak. So, she went through a lot of phases. Yeah. But finally, she this guy she met is just terrific. He's really wonderful. Um, Marjorie talked with him more than I did because Marjorie was right next to him. And secondly, Lori and I had to catch up. So, you know. But this is a person, I haven't seen Lori since I think my induction into the Bay Area <laughs> Wall of Fame. Hall of Fame, right? Two thousand eight. By, by the way, two thousand eight. Yeah. By the way, they announced that at the right time. So oh. they haven't yet announced who's made it into the Hall of Fame, and we're a week past when they said they were going to do it. Yeah. And you know, I looked up. I was looking up today for certain names just to see if they appeared uh, in the Hall of Fame. People that I felt. There should be no question that these people should be in the National Hall of Fame. So one name I looked up was Candy Jones. You know the name Candy Jones, right, Rick? You sure. Know, you know the name, Steve, don't you? Long, Long John Nebel's wife. Yeah, Long John Nebel's wife. She isn't there. Okay, I go, all right, she's a wife. It's a sexist organization. Um, because, you know, Candy Jones was on with Long John every night. So I looked up Long John Nebel. You think he's in the Broadcasting Hall of Fame? I guess not, from the way you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. I'm going to surprise you, Steve. Yes, he is. No, he isn't. And I'm going, That's what's really that all about? Shouldn't he be in the Broadcast Hall of Fame, Steve? Yes, for sure. This was Yeah, but he died. Yeah, but still, we but all know who of, he is. They've, they've voted for dead people before. You know. How often? Huh? How often did they vote for dead people? <laughs> people that you quite ask whether they're still alive or not, like like uh, Sally Jesse Raphael, you know. <laughs> well, no, I'm not making a nasty joke here. I love Sally, but come on, when's the last time we heard from her? You know, and I hope she's okay and she's in good health, and you know, I, I love her dearly. But and if anybody's going to win besides me, I hope it's her. All right. No, it's the guys from Philadelphia. I keep you're the guys from Philadelphia, <laughs> right? The who are they guys? <laughs> Going to be the conservative idiot running around telling people not to wear masks and get vaccinated. I see well, you know that guy, Phil Valentine, who was a talk show host in, I believe, Tennessee, uh, died the other died. day. Died. Uh, yeah. Of, of what? Of what? The very thing he, he issued and made a big deal out of not doing. He made a big deal. Don't get vaccinated. Right. Right. And he got COVID and he dropped dead. Right. But isn't one of the guys, what's the guy's name? The conservative radio guy who's in the running against you. Oh, uh, Elder. Larry Elder. Elder. Yeah, he's, Elder. he's in the recall. And, and he's he's, the, and he's, he's running, running for governor of California and claiming anti mask and anti vax. I've seen him twice on television. He's a maniac. He's not, right. He's a nutcase. He's a nutcase. <laughs> Uh, he's a shandam for the black people. <laughs> he is a son. You know that was what I called it. But no, he uh, uh, yeah, he's up in for my for my uh, spot in the Hall of Fame. 
they'll probably he turned out turned out his uh, ex uh, fiance uh, went to the press and told them that when she was going with him, uh, he had uh, gotten high on pot and then pulled a gun on her. <laughs> and that they, all the sexist things he had said, I and mean, he wanted a tattoo, her to get a tattoo that said, uh, 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 what, what's his name? What's his first name? Larry? Larry. Larry. The, a tattoo that said Larry's girl on her. God. And she just has shown all these horrible things about him, and it's hurt his chances now to win in California. I don't think it's hurt oh. his chances. Huh? What are you saying, Charlie? I don't think it's hurt his chances. I hope so. It's hurting his chances. Yeah, you can only hope, but Jesus. Yeah. Maybe, but anyway, uh, he fired. Come on, what about those people who were booing Trump on Saturday night? They're all idiots. <laughs> yeah. Well, they were booing Trump because he said, "Take the vaccine." Yeah. Right. They're idiots for going to a Trump rally, and then they're double <laughs> booing that. Yeah. And then they're <laughs> doubling down on their double idiocy. Down. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh man. Um, well, like, I don't know if you saw it today. Our esteemed mayor said, I think we're going to try to reschedule that concert I fucked up the other day. <laughs> about it started at five and about seven. I ran into the room where Alex was. And I said, Alex, did you just hear the lightning? See the yeah, lightning? You look out the window. <laughs> yeah. So we turned to CNN. Yeah. And there it was an empty field. You know, was in the middle of Barry Manilow. Right, right. That's exactly it. <laughs> well, and the mayor. I, I have to. I have to say, were, it's wonderful. They were hoping to find an alternate indoor venue. Oh, you're in the middle of Central Park. Where are you putting seventy thousand patrons? At first, when I was I, when I watched it, I turned it on right when it went down. But they were think they were saying they were going to come back and just broadcast it. Yeah. Well, no, he was saying he's the one who said it. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. yeah. The but voice of God announced it's been canceled, and then. De Blasio jumped on the stage and said, "No, no, no! We'll be back at ten o'clock." You had to and sit through all. o'clock, it was boring. You had well, to sit through all those they had the acts. biggest rainfall in Central yeah. Park history between Never. ten and eleven. Well, <laughs> you know, you get a good idea of what God thinks of Barry Manilow. You, know? <laughs> well, you, had, to, you had to sit through all that and go home before you got Paul Simon or Bruce Springsteen. You had to hear Mandy. Good act. Hey, don't poo poo Springsteen. Here's the funny thing. Oh, saying no, he, had, he didn't it's get a, to see it, him. It said yeah. it worth yeah. it. The yes, people, yes. people like uh, 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 Cynthia Revo and uh, uh, Bruce Springsteen had to go home, but uh, Paul Simon is already Vance, there but... because he lives across the street from the seat. <laughs> you know? Yeah, he was just waiting and somebody called him. He'd walk across, you know, Central Park. Yeah, yeah, he never had to leave the house. So, you know. <laughs> what? Well, you know, I mean, I'm sure they can do another one because Bruce Springsteen yeah. in these days will show up for a bris. Hey, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> well, I'm serious. It's not like. Here's Bruce Springsteen. Yeah, yeah, Bruce Springsteen again. Yeah. No, 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 oh, no. no. Where do you see Bruce Springsteen except on Broadway and on in concert? Well, I yes. Uh, go down to the Jersey Shore. Did yeah. you see those tickets? I checked them out just in case, but oh my God, they started like at eight hundred dollars. You know, there are there are seventy five dollar seats for every show. Not that many of them. They're hard to get, but you can't. The ones you have to stand outside. No, no, you, they're online or something. But um, oh. yeah, the good seats are eight hundred and fifty dollars a ticket. Yes, I checked them out. Yeah, what did you do? You got seats for what show was it? You wouldn't go with me. No, I went to a show with you <laughs> in which you got the impaired vision seats. Where if I were blind, it would have been a great musical. Oh no, it was it was uh, what do you call it? Uh, the 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 uh, thing. Uh, oh, that was a movie. Um, you know the big Moulin Rouge. No, no, no. It was a play. sounds like it was a play, and it was um, three hmm. words. Um, <laughs> first word is you know the famous novel by the Southern writer. <laughs> To Kill a Mockingbird. To Kill a Mockingbird. Oh, okay. She got seats for To Kill a Mockingbird, and she got impaired vision seats, but they told you that it's not that bad, right? Right. Oh, it was that bad. Well, we, we sat we, behind the, the, the desk. With there's a guitar the player in the show yeah. who plays during the show. And he, where does he sit? Right, right where we are. 
<laughs> you know, so. But I, I wish I were blind, then I could always go get the impaired vision seats. You know. Well, if you had impaired vision, you would have known there was a guy on the stage and yeah, walking in front of me. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah. And I didn't like the show. Did you see it? Shecky, Shecky goes to all the all the good plays. Yeah, I saw it. It was very good. You thought I liked it. You thought it was okay. You know, wasn't yeah. Well, To Kill a Mockingbird has your reputation that these days it's like I'm not going to call it undeserved, undeserved, but enough already with it. I didn't see the movie till a couple of years ago. Uh, for some reason, like you, you've never seen Psycho. I had never seen To Kill a Mockingbird. And I got the same re reaction you get to not having seen Psycho. What? You've never seen Psycho? You know, well, it was you've never seen To Kill. So finally, I watched it because I'm sick and tired of people saying that to me. And it's a good little movie. It's a great little yeah. movie. But it's, it's I expected the heavens to open up. Yeah. You know, and it's not that kind of movie. But it, it works. It, it's it's yeah, totally... Greg, Gregory Peck is great, and then uh... yeah, and if Le, and if Levar Burton had been in it, it would have been a spectacular. It would have been spectacular if Levar Burton were. <laughs> Robert Duvall is great. Yeah, we have Mandy Peter, with us today. By the black, Hello, the black Mandy. Man. She's working, so. Yeah. I'm trying. I mean, quiet. you know, they've taken the book out of the eighth grade curriculum that the school I used to teach in. Right? Hold on a second. Why? 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 Because, it's, because it's got the word in it again. It's it's racist. Oh, Jesus. It's unbelievable. Oh, Wait a minute. I want to talk to Mandy a second. So you're working right now, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I, but I looked about on my watch and I said, oh, shoot, it's already going. I'll jump on. But I'm, okay. I'm just listening. Well, just, discussion, just, so just when you feel like jumping in, jump in, but I don't want you to lose your job over us. No, it's even, it's so chill now. Like everybody's gone. Like, oh, I've lost, I mean, they've all left the building. They've all left. What, what do you mean? They've gone home for the day? No, they've like, one of them's gone. Well, I told you one of them retired. And then the other person that used to be next door to me, she's on a leave of absence now. So, oh, okay. So you it's can fine. talk to us whenever you want to. Right, you got to do what you want. Yeah. Right. Party time. Yeah, so I mean, it's interesting. So you can't teach To Kill a Mockingbird. You can't teach Huckleberry Finn. No. And, you know, you can't, I can't teach plays by August Wilson. You know, the best really? black playwright there is. Because if that. anybody gets offended by the word, that's it. That's my, that's your job. What word is that? Get three guests. For the name, gives with an end. Well, uh, is that right? Let me, try, let me try the three fuck, fuck, and fuck. No, 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 no. Oh, no, that's okay. Right. Oh, oh, that's okay. Oh, so it, that's okay. It's all racial. It's, it's it's all it's all it's n n n n n yeah, but you could, it. but you could teach, be stingy, but you could teach Hemingway stories that have the word kike in it, and that's fine. No one cares about it. Nobody cares about it. This reminds me of the conversation I had with somebody this weekend. I was telling him how. Uh, we were just talking about crazy movies that we saw as kids that traumatized us. And I was talking about how my dad took me to see Billy Jack when I was only like seven oh, yeah. or eight. Um, but my, when I was in the ninth grade in Latin class, our teacher wanted us to go on a field trip. She considered going, taking us to see Caligula. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> we wanted to put out, like give. <laughs> oh, so funny. And at the time I didn't realize like Bob Gucci in production. Yeah. yeah. Um, but obviously that was snuffed out. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you know what they did? Really you know what gosh. they did with Caligula? It was interesting. Um, you wonder why great actors like John Gielgud are in Caligula. Helen Mirren. And Helen Mirren are yes. in Caligula. Yes. actors. And, and, and what's his name? The guy. Rodney McDowell. Uh, no, no. Malcolm McDowell. Malcolm McDowell. Malcolm McDowell. Yeah, yeah. not Roddy McDowell. Yeah. Uh, and you wonder how they how they got them to do this. What ostensibly, when you went to see it, is a porn film. <laughs> and the answer is that when they made it, those scenes weren't being filmed. Yeah. Those scenes were chopped into the film. Like when they showed an orgy, yeah, they did a scene with an orgy, but there were just some people writhing around. All the close-ups were done later. 
So all of a sudden, when all these people go to see Caligula who were in it, they go, I was in a goddamn porn film. <laughs> you know, so I mean, um, and I and I always pointed that out that British actors will take any job that's offered them. Because <laughs> why not? Well, no, they consider it a profession. They're always they're working, working actors. And they're working Absolutely. actors. And if you have the money, they will come roll up their that's, sleeves and do the job. Just ask and, Michael Caine. And, yeah. yeah, and so that's how they got into that film. You know, they it was a job. Okay, I'll be happy to do it. Thank you very much. You know, and it didn't. Uh, none of the their scenes were offensive to them, and in any on any level. And so that's how we got all these great British actors to do a porn film. Uh, and uh, and there is an edited version, by the way. There is an edited yeah. version without all the sex. See. And that could have possibly been the one she wanted us to see, but no, 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 that was on television later or wherever. Uh, did you it was ever, the theater? I hate when things go to television. Did you ever see the television version of Scarface? <laughs> no, <laughs> what's the point? The yeah, why would you? Well, there's that there's one scene dialogue. in the beginning where they go, uh, How'd you get that scar, Tony, for meeting pussy? He says, you don't get a scar like this from eating pussy. And I swear to you, here's what it was on ABC TV. I said, why are you running Scarface? You can't even run Scarface, right? But they managed to because all of a sudden coming out of Al Pacino's mouth is, so how'd you get that scar, Tony, eating pizza? <laughs> you don't get a scar like this from eating pizza. Burns the roof of your mouth sometimes. Yeah. Where, where, whoever got a scar on their face from eating pizza? Oh, sorry, I missed, and the cheese got all over my scar. Oh, this triangular hat. Yeah. But I mean, I walked you know. out of that movie. I was a uh, senior in high school, and I, I just, it was so violent. I walked out. Oh, so and it wow. is it the is, person, it, the date I was on, he came and found me and brought me back in. If you go back, yeah. <laughs> that was after we also at the beginning, before the movie started, they played the video thriller. That was when everybody got to the thriller. <laughs> I'll never forget that. Those two things is when the premiere of the thriller. <laughs> and then I walked out because it was so freaking violent. I was like, Forget I about violence. It's really a terrible movie. Yeah. I mean, am I wrong, guys? No, it's a terrible I think, movie. I think you're wrong, personally, but it's, I don't think it's a great movie. But Come I think on. It, I think Say hello great... to my little friend. Come and on. It's hilarious, though. It's so campy. It's so over the top. For somebody, I, my, I friend, agree my friend Steve. Stephen yeah. Pearl, Pearl said that if all the guys in that picture were wearing white gloves like in a cartoon, it would be perfect because the whole thing is a cartoon. <laughs> it has a cartoonish quality. That's part of what mm -hmm. I enjoy about it. It's hyper stylized. It's ridiculous. No, what you like about it is how bad it is. No, Oliver Stone's not a bad director. He's a very odd. Well, director. he didn't direct. He, he didn't direct that picture. He only wrote it. Okay. Yeah. Who directed? I think he's a terrible director. I think he's a terrible writer. You know. Well, think... it was Brian De Palma. Brian De Palma. Wasn't Brian it? De Palma. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, I mean, it, it, it just absolutely everything about it is, you know. I mean, and it pretty much is faithful in intent to the original, isn't it, Shecky? It's a lot like the original Scarface. Well, this became a drug story, which the original wasn't. It was and a, it three was three a booze times story. Long. It's three times yeah, the original long. was beer and booze, you know, that kind of story. Yeah, yeah. Well, I could see bringing it up to date, but, you know, I mean, just, just horrible. Plus, I don't care what anybody says, and I know I'm going to get disagreement here, I think Al Pacino is one of the worst actors alive. <laughs> oh, no. That's ridiculous. No, no, no. no I think no, he's Alex. terrible. <laughs> I mean, and, and look at the choices he takes these days. Think he's, wait, do you think he's terrible in Dog Day Afternoon? Yes. Really? Okay. Send of a Woman? Huh? You think he was terrible in Send of a Woman? Oh, that's a Ab crappy film. Ab yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he was good. Playing a blind guy who almost. Oh, let's go take a drive in the uh, parking lot. Yeah, okay. Serpico? Serpico, yeah. Uh, 
Did you, ever see, did you ever see that thing he did about gay? Uh, uh, Truth is terrible. That's a terrible movie. It's a horrible movie. That's a horrible movie. He's made a lot of. He's made a lot of horrible. He made a movies. lot of horrible movies. But so is De Niro. So is Nicholson. They all make a lot of horrible movies. They're yeah, looking but, for a paycheck. But yeah, they're working they out the, again, like British. Hey, yeah, you're talking about actors. British actors doing this, so American actors take the but, money. Also, but I I can point to great films that De Niro did. Yes. His performance was incredible. Mm-hmm. You know, I can't do that with with Pacino. Uh, Godfather, Serpico, Dog Day Afternoon. I think those are all great. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't. But you know, uh, uh, but I I just never felt he was one of the great American actors. I mean, I think, I think up to a point, De Niro was. I think De Niro finally, as he got older, just gave up and took anything that came. But along. back in the seventies, De Niro would make one movie every five years. Now he makes. 50 movies right. every year. Five years. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, uh, I agree. You know. You um, know, but it's a paycheck. You know, I mean. Plays the grandfather. Well, I'll tell you who will play anything actually these days is, uh, 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 what's her name? Meryl Streep. She does everything. I mean, she's good. I'm not saying she's terrible, but she'll, she'll take almost any job. I mean, Mama Mia, come on. Yeah. <laughs> You know. Hey, it's a free trip to Italy. Right, right. Who who turns down work? Who? So who do you think has the integrity? That's a great big name actor who doesn't make bad movies. We'll give you three million dollars. I'll tell you for all the movies. In Italy I, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll tell you for all the movies that he's made, and he was they were kidding him about taking any job that came along. Uh, uh, what's his name? Um, British actor. My mind's a blank now. It's that damn drug I take. I just had his name in my mind a second ago. Um, somebody mentioned him. Michael Caine? Michael Caine. Oh, yeah. Michael Caine, in spite of all the bad films he maybe has taken, was never bad in those films. I'd have to look at the filmography because there's probably so much. But no, yeah, there, probably, there, there, there are probably some terrible films in there, but he never, uh, he never was terrible himself in those films. He, yeah. he said the material. He said that he chose it, but chose the movies by location. We're in the right. Room, it's a the, free trip to wherever. Wherever. It was a movie you. where he dressed up as a woman and was a murderer or something. Oh, was Michael Caine. Wasn't it him in that movie where he was like he was like a crossdresser or like dressed as a woman, but was. Hmm. I'm, I'm trying thinking. to think. Was that was that the movie? Um, oh, what was it? That sounds, oh. sounds like another Brian De Palma movie. <laughs> yeah, it may That's well have been. Creepy. Actually, yeah, I think it was. I think it was. Yeah, was it Dress to Kill? You dress Maybe to that's kill. it. Yeah, dress yeah. Thank you, Steve. You've got your brain. Hey, I know. Thank today. you. Mine's on vacation. <laughs> Boy, he's, he's I'm, I'm, I'm younger than you are, Alex. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Son of a woman. Yeah, that was not a great movie either. Not a bad movie. That's a bad movie. I didn't like it. Yeah. <laughs> I just remember it from cable. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? I got no taste. <laughs> what, do you mean, what do you mean you've got no taste? Why don't you? I think? love Scent of a Woman. Oh, okay. You're, You're allowed. You're allowed. You're allowed. You're Nobody like says it. you can't like it. I just said I don't. Yeah, I don't. You know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't I don't re- wish to insult people when I say I didn't like something. Oh, you like that? I'm not trying to insult you. Maybe I am. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but um, yeah. and Marjorie drives me crazy. When we don't agree on something, she says, well, we don't agree on everything. That's well, true. Well, of course, we don't agree on everything. Really? Oh, there are a lot of movies we watch that we, we like, and you say you like them, and I say I like oh. them. What was the one that you told you guys told us to watch about the hotel? White Lotus. Yeah. You said you didn't like the ending. The ending was great. No, I like the ending. I oh. it wasn't me who said I didn't like it. I had hadn't seen the ending last week. I thought the whole series was really good. It was brilliant. It yeah. was great. Well, the acting was. And now we're watching. Did you ever see I'm Enlightened? It's this by the first, by the same guy who made it, Mike White. It's with Laura Dern. Mm-hmm. And it's on HBO. It was two seasons. It's from ten mm-hmm. years ago, but it's got the same style, and it's. It might even be better. Oh, I'll check it out. En- Enlightened, write that down, dear. Enlightened. Yeah. I remember it. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, I thought White Lotus was very good. Yeah, and excellent. now we're watching this one thing I told Shecky to watch because he, he likes Broadway shows and so on. And that was um, uh, Schmigadoon or something. Schmigadoon. 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 <laughs> Uh, no. Don't make fun of Brigadoon, that <laughs> no, no, but this is it's very funny. And it's got it's got great music in it. The musical numbers are terrific. But in a lot of ways, some of them are parodies of other Broadway shows. You know? And it's got, it's got great music in it. The musical numbers are terrific. But in a lot of ways, some no, of them I'm are... having I'm having deja vu. Oh, no. Yeah. So, <laughs> As Yogi Berra said, deja vu all over again. <laughs> Didn't he say that? Was that him, Shecky? That was Yogi Berra, yeah. Yogi yeah. Berra. I sat to, next to Yogi Berra in a uh, luncheon for Yoohoo, which mm -hmm. is a chocolate beverage or questionable yeah, right. chocolate beverage. Yeah, sure. He was a big actor. Here in New York, and he yeah, was, the, yeah, was the spokesperson for right. it. And I was sitting right next to him because they asked me to join them because they would bought time on the radio station and they wanted me to show up. So I went down there and I had lunch sitting next to Yogi Berra. And all I could keep saying to myself as I listened to him was, this is the dumbest man I've ever sat next to in my life. It ain't over <laughs> till it's over. <laughs> <laughs> but he was. He was, a, he was a ball player. He probably went he was to a very once good a ball week, player. you know. Yeah. Yeah, so that's supposedly a very sweet man. So yeah. no, he's supposedly a very nice man. Yeah. yeah, Len, didn't you say you have a job or something, and that's why you uh, can't call sometimes on the show? Wait a minute, you didn't. Your mic isn't on. Muted. Your mic isn't on. Turn well, what's my, my computer? Look at that picture. What is that? <laughs> what is what? Oh, mine look. It looks really weird to me. Really? Yeah, I look like I'm a monster. <laughs> that's, just, that's how you look, Ah, uh, I knew that was coming. <laughs> uh, yes, I have a job, but I figured I'd join for 15 minutes and say hey. So. Well, that's good. No, that's fine. That's terrific. <laughs> um, but we've just been talking about movies and about movie actors and, you know, good ones and bad ones. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mostly bad ones. Well, you know, they're, they're mostly bad ones. Yeah. Some actors who I think consistently have been good. I can't name them right now, but I enjoy watching them, you know, and uh, I'm amazed by how good they can be. Uh, do, you, do you feel that the, the people, the actors of today are very generic? You know, you can say the name, I know that name, but I couldn't pick him out of a lineup. You know, well, may, that may be because you're getting older. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> you know, we watch, we watched Marjorie and I like watching TMZ. That's one of our guilty pleasures. Mm. And we sit there and go, who's that? Who have you ever heard of? It's yeah, on who's that? Exactly. Right. Where do you stand on Daniel Day Lewis? He's always good. <laughs> yeah. I just find him dull. He's making shoes. I, as a human being, is tall. But all these, I, Harrison Ford, you know, you see Harrison Ford. Newer. Harrison Ford is one, Harrison Ford is not a great actor, and I think he'd be the first one to agree. Right. But, but he's a great type, and he always turns in a serviceable performance. Yes. Well, he's an Errol Flynn type. Errol Flynn right. was not a great actor, right? But he was in very good movies and very popular movies. You know. Yeah. A lot of charisma. He yeah, did the show. Charisma. Yeah. Charisma. He had um, good timing. I like, you know, he just, especially in Indiana Jones, he just oh, yeah. did yeah. that part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's currently doing another Indiana Jones film. Yeah, he's only 80. <laughs> yeah. He's playing the grandfather. Is he the grandfather? It, uh, well, it's going to, I guess it's going to be Indiana Jones and the Steel Walker. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're filling in good for uh, your friend today, Andrew. What? You're filling in good for Andrew. Oh, that's Brian. Yeah. 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 Uh, here comes Brian Neary. Uh, there Hi, Brian. Is. Hi, Brian. Hello. Hello. If Lane could call, I'll call. <laughs> <laughs> I'm listening, but I'm trying to get some work done. So I was doing some work while I was listening. So, yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. Oh, you know what I'm you know what I'm watching now is the uh designated survivor. I know I'm very yeah. late on it. Yeah. yeah. That's a good show. I, I, I thought it was a good show. I love it. 
the kids are watching it with me and they're like, they're ready for the next episode. So we just started a couple of them. So they're really excited about it. You know what, what Marjorie started? Can I say, tell <laughs> you? She starts watching the show called Rain. Now, I seem to have remembered that show from somewhere. And all of a sudden, when she's watching it, I'm noticing it's taking a break for a commercial. It doesn't run a commercial, but it's taking a break for a commercial. Right. It's on Netflix. And I said to her, I said, this is from this has been on national TV. Yeah. And I go and I look it up and it was on the CW. It ran four seasons. There yeah. are 77 episodes. <laughs> four, seasons. four seasons. And it four seasons. And it is kind of mediocre because it is, after all, the CW. Yeah. They're not going to put big production values in it. It, it is no. mediocre, but I'm enjoying it. Really? Has anybody watching. watched Jenny and Georgia? What? I just started it last night. Uh, what? Jenny yeah. and Georgia. What's Jenny and Georgia? I On guess Netflix. You're... It's just delightful for, uh, you know, if you want some just kind of soapy teen-ish kind of, it's mostly teen drama, but yet there's an adult part two. It's kind of, it's interesting. I've only watched one episode. What's it called? Something in Georgia? Jenny. Jenny in Georgia. In Georgia. Uh, well, and I mean, it's only got like eight episodes, which I think there's a, only been one season. After a while, I've got my wife back. <laughs> <laughs> she, I went in today. She said, well, I'm already on the 12th episode. I said, good. You only got 67 more to go. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching that, uh, the sitcom thingy on uh, CNN, which is pretty good. No, but it's not. Yeah, it just shows reflection. I like seeing the reflection of oh, love. Uh, Other stuff I forgot. Yeah. They, they yeah. forgot Nat Hyken ever was born. You oh, mean the right. history, Brian? The history? Yeah, yeah. just to see see some of the old stuff that I don't remember. No, yeah. new no. stuff. No, stuff but he, from he, 90, he's the right. You know, Nat Hyken as a producer was a major comedy producer in sitcoms. Oh. Years ago. Oh. Sergeant Bilko, <clears throat> 54, where Car are 54. you? Four. Yeah. Uh, what else? Well, he didn't make the cut. He didn't make the cut. Wow. You know, the Freeze Company made the cut. <laughs> yeah. I, I, it's, a, it's an okay series. I just, I agree with Shecky. There are people that are left out. Uh, well, because they're in black and white. Uh, you know, you got a point there. But yeah. can't, they, they, can't they just insert, insert black and white footage into the show? They should leave it to Beaver and stuff like that, too. So there's black Well, and white that's stuff. different. It's leave it to Beaver. Uh, but it, it was interesting to see how the world well, what was going on in the u.s during those times you know with the women's movement and with all these different things that were going on and see how yeah, the sitcoms um, was flowing yeah. through. but i don't think they represented amos and andy right i love you know, that show. in I fact love. amos and andy gets always gets represented wrong in fact last night we were watching something and they brought up Amos and Andy and whoever the host was in the discussion said, yeah, it ran on ABC. <laughs> no, it ran on CBS. I know that because it's the very network they were on in radio. Well, first they were on CBS and then NBC and then back to CBS when they, when CBS bought Jack Benny and made that big deal. In well, that's in radio, in radio you're talking. Yeah. But yeah. the TV show was CBS because at that point CBS owned Amos and Andy. Yeah, and and they they said there was a big hue and cry about it, and that's why it was taken off the air. No, it was taken off the air just because it was taken off the air. If I'm right, Shaggy, right? No, because the NAACP. No, but that was in reruns, I think. No, no, no. no. The NAACP, there, there was... an organization whose in their name uses the word negro <laughs> no color color colored people yeah colored no. people. yeah 60 some odd episodes aired on cbs and to fill out a syndication package 13 were made that only aired in syndication right did you ever were you ever bothered charlie by uh since we'll ask the black person in the audience <laughs> today were you ever bothered by by amos and andy Oh, I loved it. We watched it all the time. Yeah, we watched no, no, it. I think you're just asking him that as a microaggression, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, which will come back to haunt me if I'm ever going to be the host of Jeopardy. 
Yeah, that, that, that just knocked you out of the Hall of Fame right there. <laughs> now, did you hear what they did? They're replacing this guy, whatever his name is, a, the producer of the sh- uh, the executive producer of the show, with the woman who is going to be doing the nighttime version, Mayim Bialik, mm. who's on Big Bang Theory. Yeah. Who is, in fact, a, uh, a neuroscientist, a, a newer biologist, but she's an anti vaxxer. Oh, don't call me that. Yeah. Yeah. Give me a PhD. Give me a break. Are you sure of that, Shecky? Because you told me that and I didn't know it. Yep. Wow. Wow. And how can this guy still be the executive producer? He's bad enough. They just haven't made the buyout deal yet, I believe. Look, first of all, the question is num- number one, I don't think he should have been made host. I mean, no, he, 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 well, he made after, himself host. After holding all these auditions and then as executive producer, choosing yourself, it just, <laughs> you know, it, it questions the, what, the, the vitality or what is I'm looking for? The integrity. Integrity yeah. of, the, of the choice. However, um, uh, he, um, uh, they, they, uh, they're not, they are, I don't know who they're looking at now, but there were a lot of people that were better than he would be. He was, in fact, he was up to be the uh, the host of The Price is Right or something at one time. I think it's yeah. on YouTube, the um, test show he did, yeah. his audition show. And, and, he, and he didn't make that. And then he tried to be host of another show. And Let's make make a deal. Let's make a deal. And, he, didn't and he, by the way, he's executive producer of both of those shows. Oh, yeah. how did that work? Yeah. <laughs> So uh, uh, you know, the trouble is the show Jeopardy is a has a certain viewership that is very protective of the show, more than any show I think on television. Mm-hmm. They, they want to protect the integrity of the show, but I got to tell you, it's gone to all hell in a handbasket during this. <laughs> yeah, but look how much publicity they're getting out of it. Oh. For all you know, this has all been done for publicity. I don't think so, but on the other hand, should the guy have been thrown out for something he did 10 years ago. Eight years yes, because he's one of the biggest creeps in game show history. Well, that, that's, uh, that's not the point here. The point is, mm-hmm. on the merit of what they're trying to get him out for, does he deserve it, or was he simply part of the zeitgeist at the moment, and he would have never said that today? <laughs> That doesn't, uh, forget it. <laughs> no, go ahead. No, I mean, that's ridiculous, Alex. Okay, all right. You know, how about, how about, what's the cutoff point? Let's say somebody did something 30 years ago, which we've had a case of. We have a mm-hmm. case now of uh, that Bob Dylan supposedly was screwing a 14-year-old. 12-year-old, more than 50 years ago. 12, was it a 12-year-old? 12 years old in 1965. Yeah, today she's 67. <laughs> and, and and she's filed charges against Bob Dylan. And I hate to be the one to defend all the time, but I also taught a seminar on Bob Dylan for seven years. Every day of his life is tracked in 1965. There's a book, Bob Dylan Day by Day. He was not in New York City during the six weeks. And it turns out this woman accusing him is a psychic, obsessed fan. I mean, it's craziness. Wow. So this, will yeah. get thrown out. this will get thrown out of court, I think, pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm surprised it isn't A.J. Weberman. Right. Now, that would make more sense. Anybody know what I'm referring to? Yeah, you used to have on your show. Yeah, the garbologist. <laughs> yeah. Garbologist. Oh, wow. He used to go through Bob Dylan's garbage to analyze Bob Dylan's <laughs> life. Yeah, you, oh, so you do remember him, Brian. Yeah, hey, I remember you talking about him before. Yeah, maybe Live 105 or something, but yeah. Oh, by the way, I mentioned something earlier before you came on, Brian. Uh, and uh, so this means, guess who came over today to hang out? So Lori Thompson. Oh, yeah. Oh. Lori Thompson. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. How is she? She's fine. She's living down in, uh, where is it? Mississippi. Mississippi. And she's engaged. And she's engaged to a very nice guy. I really like him. Great. That's terrific. Yeah. Yeah. Was she was she married before? Uh, no. no, really? Wow. Yeah, I I, I, I made this joke awesome. earlier, but I said to her, you know, aren't you a little young to be getting married? Yeah, <laughs> she, she beat me. So, <laughs> uh, the, um, 
So I, when, I was always there. I was always there early for the for the breakfast with Bennett's and for for the the all your supper with Schwarzman shows. I'd be there like hours early, first in line, and I always used to flirt with Ariel and always say hi and yeah. blah blah blah. Yeah. I almost no, uh, for, Mandy um, wants to know what we're talking about. My my newswoman was on my radio show. Oh, okay. Show. Yeah, I, I haven't seen her. Go for a ride I haven't seen I her in how many years, Marjorie? Two thousand eight. Two thousand eight. Oh, wow. So, Wow. It's been a the while. San Francisco Hall of Fame. It's been a while. But I'm going to do a thing with her so we have an interview with her on the show. Very good. I want to jump in. I just, I just want to be fair because I Googled it and there's a lot of news stories that Maya Bialik is not an anti vaxxer with social media people who didn't want her to be host of Jeopardy. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I'm wrong. I'm just curious. She's been fully vaccinated and not at all an anti vaxxer. She, you know, so okay. Much well, in that case, take over. I like her. Take over. But it's uh, LeVar Burton been vaccinated. But, <laughs> yeah, they could vaccinate him 50 times and he wouldn't be good doing that show. No. <laughs> uh, but the uh, winner, what about the Ken, whatever his name was? Ken Jennings? Supposedly, yeah, what about him doing the show? Supposedly yeah. he's always been in the lead for it because he did. Oh, he's going to get the job eventually whenever. Yeah, he, he's smarter than everybody, right? Yeah. Yeah. He's no, smarter he, than he, all of us. He said they did. A, he did a very nice job. He's yeah. milk toast. He's perfect. Yeah, yeah, that's what you want. You don't have. You don't want to get in the way of the game, right? You know, we don't want Robert De Niro or Al Pacino hosting it. You know, <laughs> I didn't do. I you know, now here's your host, Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> the only thing I, I hope a new person will, will do is something that I didn't like that uh, uh, Alex Trebek did, and that is when somebody got. The answer wrong. They went and he went, Oh, I'm sorry. Like you dope. <laughs> you know, he had that. Well, am I right? Yeah. Yeah. My Jeopardy pet peeve yeah. has always been the idiot who bets everything in final Jeopardy. Not yeah. realizing that you can't remember. remember you can't remember cheers. Dollars. Remember Cheers? Wasn't what's his name on Cheers and the show? Cliff was on it, I think. The yeah, mailman. Yeah, and Mr. Know It All, and he he went to the final Jeopardy and he bet everything at the end and lost. People do it all the time, though. You yeah. think you're smart enough to be on Jeopardy, you're smart enough to know not to bet everything. A, a, a little piece of trivia here: which one of our panel members actually was on a boat in China with Alex Trebek? Uh, who is Rick Sheckman? It's the only Sheck is on a boat in China. Yeah. <laughs> You were, you were on the boat with him, right? Yes, I was. And he was part of, because they, it was 200 passengers and they would broke us up into like groups of 30 for the bus rides to wherever, the mm -hmm. Great Wall, wherever you were going. Mm -hmm. And he mm -hmm. was part of my group. Uh, mm -hmm. And I was sitting, we were going to some temple in a, um, in a boat on a lake. And someone says, that's Alex Trebek over there. And I look over and go like, Oh, yes, looks like Alex Trebek. Well, <laughs> it was Alex Trebek. Oh, really? Okay. All right. His wife is a lovely woman. Jean. Shecky, you'll, you'll know Shecky. How many years was Art James the host before Trebek? Oh, no, no, it was Art Fleming. Art Fleming. Art Fleming, Art Fleming yeah. Well, he, it started, was it 64 to maybe 72? Like 70 years. years. The Forgotten Man, yeah. 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 Well, somebody said they should get Art Fleming back, and they go like, "Well, his ashes are in um, <laughs> some uh, ocean they, they up can, in they, Maine." You know, they, they can get Andrew. They can get Andrew Cuomo. Yeah, but no, that's what you want. Well you know, you want John Daly. You want an Art Fleming. You want an Art James. You want a you down. You want somebody. Can I call it neutral? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Who's yeah. not there Funny. to interfere with the game? And they don't have to be that smart. They've got the fucking answers. Right. Well, what you have, yeah. you, they just have to be I'll able to read the questions. I'll, right. tell you, okay. I'll tell you what you had in Alex Trebek that none of these guys are bringing in are, and he was that he was a professional game show host. Well, that's what I mean. And you he know, we're saying, you know, be a game show host and and not get in the way. And of the game and spoil the game. Right. If you're too, too much yeah. in the middle of it, you're going to ruin it. We need Tom. You know, it would be like if Groucho hosted Jeopardy. <laughs> <would be> <laughs> you, also, you, you, you also have to have the ability day in and day out to do the same 
goddamn game to say the same goddamn script. Right. And keep it and keep it moving. Right. And make it seem fresh. But Dude, every day the script was the same. I yeah, but Groucho was, was, really was himself. What? Groucho Alan was himself. Well, Groucho. That's what I'm saying. But, you know, Jackie and I were talking about this the other day. Groucho, but you bet your life the game was that nothing. for him. The yeah. game on, the game on, uh, we'll go a little bit. He didn't over. care about the game. But the yeah, game but on, on, you, in, on you bet your life was like the gum you got in a pack of baseball cards. You know, right. it was just there, yeah. you know. But the yeah. meat were the baseball cards. Yeah, you know, all it was was Groucho playing around with people. And then let's right. go to the game. Well, got... Okay, let's play the game for two minutes. And yeah, you watch the show for Groucho. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, I love. And, and now who's trying to do it? Um, Leno. Jay Leno oh, wants to do it. Yes. Bet your life. Oh. And I said to Shecky, you don't even have to call it. You bet your life. There's no game there. You right. know. But he's going to do his jaywalking segment on it. His famous oh, jaywalking segment. What could we have here? <laughs> she gets prettier. At, don't tell oh, me. She gets prettier every every time I see her. Hey, Adrian. She wants to come in and say goodbye, and she says yes, and then she's all shy. How long is her hair going to get? And they just they just trimmed it a little bit. Uh, Tiffany trimmed it too, so yes, it's yeah. good long. Yeah, yeah. Hi, look at that. Don't look at me. Hi. <laughs> you going to school? Is she, yeah. oh, she, you, plays, uh, she plays shy until she starts acting up and want to be seen. Yeah. Hi, Adrian. How are you? Good. Yeah, I'm good. Does she like the car, uh, Brian? She like to go for a ride? Yes, yes, <laughs> she likes the car. She yeah, likes I, the car. I, I, I want my ride, too. You need to call me. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, listen, we've kind of run out of time here. This has been another fun hour of, of just enjoying ourselves. And we find most people watch this after the show, not while we're doing it. Um, because there's hardly any people watching it right now. Yeah, I'm one. So there's only well, if they're going to watch it, they should call in. So Yeah, yeah. and all, all, there are more people actually on that are watching it, supposedly. <laughs> but then after it's all over, hundreds of people watch the re re replay so people seem to really like the show it's just maybe not available to them this time of day thank you shecky always wonderful i'll talk to you in a couple of minutes uh charlie wallace nice to see you here if i can't get you there uh but we get you there whenever you can so well uh, edward Berger hasn't said a word so let's let edward Berger say that's all folks that's all folks <laughs> yeah there we go and Marjorie, thank you so much, dear. Uh, Jeff Stein, are you back home again, Jeff? Jeff's oh, frozen. Yeah. He froze. <laughs> frozen. I think he fell asleep. Uh, no, he's frozen. I mean, but I mean, we, oh, there he is. He's trying, but he's got some kind of problem. We, anyway, Mandy, always good to see you. How's everything in Georgia going? I, yeah, I got to see my daughter from Texas on Friday. Oh, oh, really? That was great. She came to town? Came to town, so oh. I got to see her. But now she's back. Oh, okay. Well, good. Good. Yep. Glad to see you again. Always a pleasure. She was amazed how many masks she saw. Mm. But oh, Charlie, really? you know. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, not a lot of masks in Texas, Charlie? Uh, not <laughs> even in Austin. People are just asking for it, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, Len LaFrisco, thank you. Ryan Neary and that uh, wonderful little uh, doll you have there. That, uh, it seems very real. <laughs> <laughs> very lifelike. Yeah. Uh, and thank you for being here. And Adrian, thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it. And, and finally, <laughs> Steve Bender, thank you as well. Everybody can big wave goodbye. I'll wave goodbye at you and uh, we'll see you all next week. Bye. Bye. See ya. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye.